Hey guys, it's Bree. Uh, welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. This is a continuation of the Truth Will Set You Free. Um, just reliving my past relationship between um, John and I, which was, for those of you who maybe are new to the channel, um, over the course of about five years, and ending, unfortunately, not um, long enough ago. So um, when I left off on part 15, I think I was on November 28th, 2018. Um, honestly, these next couple videos are gonna be the worst part of this whole story for me. This is uh, by far one of the top three, top two, top, top worst, experiences worst days worst m I don't even know of my entire life and it's not easy to tell and so I'm telling this story based on email conversations between John and I just for um, um, you know so there's not any uh, opinions or my perspective it's literally just word for word what was written in email documentation between him and I so take it for what it is and um, so to do this part of the story my emails get a little messy they kind of a lot of the story is me emailing myself screenshots of what happened or conversations I had with um, the mother of John's child, Lauren, and um, a new character to the story, Kelly. So just to, I guess, let me go back real quick. Um, hold on one second. Just to refresh anyone's memory or anyone that has been following along, um, I wanna say this is kind of the beginning of the end. I guess it was all the end, but this is honestly, pretty fucking shitty and I'm this is part 16 of my story and for anyone that's been around since part four I just want to refresh your memory on a key piece of information that is going to come to play in this story so um on 7 2018 July 22nd 2018 at 5 39 p.m. John sent me an email with the subject of gift 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 and in this email it was just one sentence and it says best gift ever meeting my love instead of you and there's a picture and for those of you just to refresh your memory this is the picture wait Try to get the ring light out of the way. I don't know how to do this. So those are John's legs. That is a bed that's not his. And that is a female looking at herself in the mirror. I don't know, unknown to the picture. Maybe knowing the picture was taken in a lingerie or a swimsuit. I don't know. He claims it's a swimsuit. It looks like fucking lingerie. But this is the picture that you want to keep in mind when we continue on with the story. Uh, maybe it's a swimsuit. I don't know. Anyway, so that was July 22nd and that was mentioned in part four So I need to go back now to where we was going to start on November 27th um, Hold on one second Pull this back up And on November 22nd um, 2018 I emailed myself screenshots of a Facebook Messenger conversation I had between Lauren, the mother of his child, and myself. Um, just side note, we've never met. We still have never met. I dated John for, from, I met in him in 2013 and is now 2019, so that's, white enough time in my book that you would think the mother of his child would want to meet the woman that's around his son 50% of the time but again I don't know what's true and what's not true she didn't want to meet me he didn't want me to meet her I don't know 
but I find it a little bizarre that over the course of five years, I never once met Lauren in person and only this Facebook Messenger conversation that we had on um, November 27th was, oh, I'm sorry, it started on, um, hold on one second. Let me see when it started. So, just to be accurate here, hold on one second. Um, Thursday, let's see. Um, so I believe that I responded. So Lauren sent me a Facebook Messenger message um, on November. 13th at 5 16 p.m. So that would have been a Tuesday, November 13th. And from my screenshots, it looks like I responded on Monday. So that would have been November 19th, 2018. Um, the reason I responded on Monday is I didn't see it until then. So I sent this to myself via email on November 27th. And I'm just gonna read as follows. Um, again, she had also tried to contact me on Instagram um, with some message saying she wanted to talk, but I ignored that message going based on, you know, John's warning to stay away, stay clear. She was dangerous, she was manipulative, she's gonna trick me, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I didn't respond on Instagram, and honestly, I didn't respond on Facebook until she confronted me with the screenshot of a text message that John sent to her, which on, um, which I will read to you. So anyway, on November 13th, 5, 16 p.m., Lauren sends me a, me a messenger um, on Facebook that says, hi, Brie. I hope you're doing well. I'm sure I'm the last person you want to hear from, but I think it's really unfair the way John put us against each other. Um, he recently sent me some texts making some pretty awful allegations against you, and I wanted to talk to you to get your side of the story if you feel up to it. And then she sent me two screenshots of the conversation or the text message that John sent her. So let me just read that to you. And so what he sent to her, what John, my supposed boyfriend and, you know, partner, my best friend, my love, whatever, even though it was bullshit, like we were together and, it, and this is the mother of his about to be five year old child that I've never met. He sent her a text message at 7.25 a.m. Um, I don't know if I have the day. I think it was on, I think it was on November 10th, Saturday. But anyway, it was sometime in November. He sent a message at 7.25 a.m. to Lauren that reads as follows. <sighs> Ready for this? I'm a survivor of domestic abuse. Oh, I'm sorry, wait, hold on. I gotta get this right. It's a classic. I'm a survivor of domestic violence and narcissist abuse. It's the reason I haven't been okay for a long time. The level of abuse inflicted on me was unprecedented and so destructive it almost killed me. I'm fortunate to have you as my friend and Max, his son, as my why. I love you guys and I've been thinking about talking to you in detail about what I've been through and how I can continue recovering. You told me to get over the trauma. I don't know if you understand exactly what that meant, but I'm trying. Every day that passes, I become a little stronger and put a little more distance between myself and a world of constant attacks, gaslighting and psychotic abuse. You know I have made significant changes in my life, taking extraordinary precautions and deliberate action to remove all toxicity. I am finally feeling like I can do it and be free of the extreme damage caused by Brie and her abuse. And I appreciate your patience and support. 
I needed time, education, and therapy to forgive myself for allowing such a disgusting monster near me, my family, or my home. I am a survivor of narcissist abuse and my experience will protect me on my road to recovery. Don't demand a response anymore. So, when I saw that, I was like, yo, you know, I probably would have ignored the Facebook Messenger request to talk if it had not been for the most absurd, outlandish fucking pile of garbage that he sent her for no fucking reason. Like, and not even knowing that I was ever going to see it. So basically trashing me behind my back to the mother of his child for what? What was the end game? He claims, let me give you a little insight here well, before I go on, that he did this as a setup to test her, to trick me into talking to her to see if I was on his side. I, I don't know. Anyway, so what I responded with at 8.01 p.m. on Monday was, oh, wow, can you please tell me when, he, when that was sent? Oh, and she says Sunday, November 11th. And if I want to kind of refresh everyone's memory of the last episode or part 15, on November 10th is when I got arrested on the suspected DUI. Again, never charged because I had told the officer I had a legal prescription for Xanax. And they took me to the Gilbert jail through the back door, drew my blood, took me, called my mom had her pick me up in the parking lot and took me out the back door again to get in her car with no charges, no paperwork, nothing. I was never, there was no mugshot. I was never processed. It was a f weird ass fucking, I don't know what happened. It cost me a lot of money in a DUI attorney to be never charged. It was a fucking nightmare. I lost my job. So that was November 10th. And he knew that. He talked to me that morning when I got home. He called me and I was sleeping and I was out of it and I woke up and told him everything that had happened. And he was well aware of what happened. So the day after, he decided to make this text message to Lauren. Now why? Just, anyway. So, okay, so moving on. Sorry for the ring light in my eyes. Um, okay, so. I then responded and to Lauren in Facebook Messenger and said, I'm so upset. I'm so upset. I'm literally shaking right now. She said, I really don't want to cause any problems. I don't know where to sit with this ring light. Okay, maybe that'll work. Um, she had sat, God, I'm like, my hands are sweaty, my heart is racing. Oh, I feel sick reading this. Um, so she said, I really don't want to cause any problems between you and John or between me and you or between me and John. My true concern is for Max. John has made a lot of threats against me, so now I'm hesitant to say anything else to you. But I do hope that if he has treated you at all like he has treated me, that you are okay. That is exactly how I felt when I read those texts from him because that's exactly what he did to me and what he did to his girlfriend before me to a lesser degree. I'm so sorry for upsetting you. I said, don't apologize. You aren't the one I'm upset with. She said, I really don't know the situation at all between you and John because I've only heard his version of things, but I'm sure you deserve to be in a healthy relationship. So don't settle for anything less than that. Oh, I'm shaking. With him or with anyone else. It would... Be best if you don't say anything to him about this, but if you do reach out to him, just be careful. I said, honestly, I want to say something to him so fucking bad, but I feel it's not right to, I feel that's not the right approach with him. I'm also hesitant speaking to you for many reasons, probably none of which are real at this point. 
If we do continue to talk, I'd appreciate if you didn't go to him right away with anything I might have to say. If we keep the conversation private, I think it might be interesting for both of us. <sighs> oh, hold on. Oh, take this iPad out. Okay. My hands are sweating holding the iPad. Um, she said, I don't have any plans going with him with anything we talk about. This is for my own peace of mind and to try to get to the truth. I said, the conveying truth is so far-fetched for me anymore. She said, the day after John sent me those texts about you, Max said something to me after he heard John yelling at me on the phone. He said, this is a four-year-old. He said, it's okay, mommy. Daddy is only saying mean things to you because he thinks you are Brie. Bitch, what? A four-year-old approached the mother that I've never met and said, it's okay, mommy. Daddy is only saying mean things to you because he thinks you are Brie. <laughs> Yo. Oh. She said, that did not settle well with me, and I felt like I wanted to have a better understanding of what's really going on. I'm not trying to take Max away from John, and I honestly never have. But I do want to protect John from certain things he should be hearing or seeing. Should not be hearing or seeing. I know how much John has lied about me, so I don't believe a single a thing he says anymore. Excuse me. Fuck. Um... <sighs> okay, so this is so ridiculous. I say, I'm not at home, so I can't go into detail right now, but I'm open to telling you my side of the story. I've always told him I'd never go behind my back talking to you, but the text messages he sent you are awful and unforgivable, so I have no choice other than defend myself. She said, I understand completely. I said, there's so much I could tell you, but I don't know where to begin. Is there some place specific you'd like me to start with? She said, I don't really know. I just worry about Max and I do worry about John. I don't know what to think about any of it, honestly. Do you think he's mentally okay? Is there anything you think I should know? I said, I'll text you when I get home in a little bit, but I can say 100% that your son is in no danger whatsoever with his father. She said, that's good. I have learned to have very low expectations when it comes to John. At this point, all I can hope and pray is that he keeps Max safe and, pray and pays for half his expenses because I can't keep paying for him anymore. I said, I'm sorry to have to go back on my word about not talking to him, but I was at his place tonight. Oh, wait. I said, I'm sorry to have to go back on my word about not talking to him, but I was at his place tonight, and he straight lied to my face twice about details surrounding his conversations with you and me. I've had enough of the lies, and I can't take it anymore. So I told him I was going to talk to you, and he got super upset with me. I can't keep having his crap destroy my life. It's killing me. I'm telling you this so you can be prepared for whatever he says next about... You, me to you. I'd take it with a grain of salt this time. We can talk tomorrow. She said, I'm so sorry that happened. Oh, I'm so hot. Um, I'm like sweating with this. She said, I'm so sorry that happened, but thanks for letting me know because he's probably going to start a war with me today. I have pretty much always taken that he's what he said about you with a grain of salt, which is why I finally reached out to you. I know what it's like to be in your position. I have no end result. I'm just looking for here. I want you to know I am not who John says I am, and I don't believe you are who he says you are. And if you are in his and Max's lives, you and I don't have to be enemies. And if you aren't in their lives, I am still someone you can talk to that understands. I said, so I don't know where to start, I'm, so I'm going to begin with today. I don't know how to explain my side of the story exactly, so I was thinking I'll just send you screenshots from my conversation with him starting with me telling him I was going to talk to you. It's kind of a lot, but I think it would be best for you just to read exactly what was said. All I ask is please don't use me in the middle of whatever you have going on with him. I'm seriously not interested in being any part of it. At this point, I'm trying to piece my life back together and figure out how to be okay again. I'm so fucking hurt and broken after all the years being with him, and I literally lost everything in my life trying to save our relationship, but I keep forgiving him and going back for more each time, hoping it wouldn't be like the last, only yet to be again disappointed. I honestly do love him, but I can't take the games anymore. It's killing me inside. I'm so hot. <sighs> 
I want you, um, I know he told you that him and I aren't speaking anymore, but that's false. I want you to know whatever shit is going on between him and I had nothing to do with your son, and I do care very much for him, and I do care for him very much. I want only the best for him and would never do anything to cause him harm ever. I can't have children of my own, and it has been an absolute joy being able to be a part of Max's life, watching him grow into an amazing little boy. She ignored that completely and said, like... She said, is everything that John said in that email he just sent to us true? Did you really sleep with him at our condo while I was pregnant? Okay, so then it jumps around a little bit. So I read the email in the last um, part about where, yeah, I've said this from the beginning. I met him in 2013. She had their child in, I met him in November 2013. She had their son in March 2014. The reason I slept with him was because he told me he had an ex-girlfriend that was pregnant and they were completely broken up. They were never getting back together. They wanted nothing to do with each other and they were having a child, blah, blah, blah. At that point in time, I had no reason to find a stranger just to lie to me. Like, if you're going to lie to me, why even tell me that in the beginning? So back in 2013, when I met him, I believed what he said. Like, I didn't know not to believe what he said anyway um so I'm just gonna keep reading the messages between Lauren and I and then I'll piece it together with like the other emails but it gets to the point of where the important part um, is when Kelly enters the the story and that is from Lauren's messages to me so I'm just gonna finish reading these messages oh shit it's at 2145 um we'll pick up in part 17. Peace.